Assalamu alaikum. I'm Ashley Pearson Khan with Muslimi. I'm here today. I'm so excited to talk to this person. I'm here with Sister Jamie Brown to talk about art and hopefully uh, coming to Islam. Thank you for joining me. Well, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here and hear all of your mysterious questions. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they're too mysterious. I, I'm like, you probably have an idea of what I want to ask you. Okay. Because I think we're similar. I don't yeah. know. In both looks and dating. I know. So, so. Yeah, so I was like, oh, I can't wait to talk to her. Well, so, so glad you're here. Thank you. Yeah, so tell me first, how is Muslim Fest? Uh, Muslim Fest, this is my second year. Okay. I was here in 2019 mm -hmm. and then again this year. And it's been a while. Yeah, it's Thank been a while, COVID. but it's nice. You know what? It's really, really nice for mm -hmm. people like myself. Where I'm from, there's not a huge Muslim community. Mm -hmm. So oftentimes, as soon as I leave my house, I don't feel the ummah. Yeah. But then I get to come to events like this. And when you're in a place where everyone else is Muslim, you can hear walaikum salam instead of being the only one saying it ever. Right. You know, so it's nice to interact with people and just also to support even the businesses too. Right. There's so many different like Muslim-owned businesses that you can, like, you know, do a little shopping and things like that. And plus all the, the different acts on stage. And mm -hmm. we did some of the, um, there was a painting competition that we got to be judges for. So, you know, there's so many different things happening and different like mediums to yeah. just kind of like walk around and discover. So it's a good time to be here for sure. Yeah, it sounds like it's been fun for you. Yeah. 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 Judging the art competition, I'm sure was. Uh, yeah, a lot of talent. And they only yeah. had 20 minutes. They had 20 Ooh, minutes to complete okay. the whole painting. So it was hard so, to choose. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of good talent though, so it was fun to be able to just kind of interact and like encourage them and say, you know, take this with you, keep going, and you know, just kind of get that that creativity yeah. constantly flowing, you know. Yeah. What inspires you when you go to create art? Ooh. Color, 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 definitely color, always color. Yeah, yes. you, you do have a lot of color, and it's kind of abstract is how I, I view it. But how do you, how would you describe your Yeah, object? it's very abstract and geometric. Mm -hmm. A lot of the murals yes. I do in different cities, I take the city's history mm -hmm. in the background and I'll do my research to find out what's the story of the city, what's the story of the people, what kind of people live there, what do they do, what are they known for? And I'll take the history of each city and hide little shapes that are actually symbols relating back to the city's culture. So, you know, if you're passing by, you might think, hey, look, it's cool colors and shapes. Mm -hmm. But then once you know the meaning behind it, it's one of those cases where you can't unsee it. Mm -hmm. So I like to incorporate shapes and definitely uncomfortable colors. So colors that you wouldn't typically see next to each other. Like, for example, like olive green and pale lavender. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Do you have um, a place where you went to paint something you were just like, oh, I, I know exactly what I want to do and it was just, it felt easy? Uh, yes. Um, my first mural in the States actually mm -hmm. was in downtown Milwaukee on a skywalk. And so it connects two buildings. It's a skywalk like mm -hmm. this and there's pillars. And it was a national call for art, actually international call for art. And I actually got chosen as the artist. And I thought it was really interesting because the beams that are supporting the skywalk have an odd number of pillars. Okay. And there were five pillars. And I said, SubhanAllah, this project was meant for me. <laughs> and so I just, I put everything into it and I told a huge story. Myself, I'm Native American. So the history of the locals, which I'm local to that area, mm -hmm. kind of transforms from the Native American settling all the way up into the industrial age as the city turns to now. So you know, taking that all in and being able to just be outside in a community where maybe they're not used to seeing a female street artist mm -hmm. or a Muslim female street artist yeah. or a Muslim female street artist in hijab. Right. You know, it gives me the opportunity to kind of give unspoken dawah because people that normally wouldn't act interact with someone like me, they can see, you know, how I'm behaving, how I'm carrying myself and just things like that. So it's nice to kind of like bring the both the artist side and the Muslim side into my work. When, you know, people do interact with you, do they ever seem confused? Like maybe, you know, they, they first look at you and they're like, hmm, okay, this lady. Yeah. She, she, she's she's Muslim. I, she's Muslim. But mm -hmm. then you open your mouth and they're like, where are you from? <laughs> There's do you no get accents. a lot of that? <laughs> um, yes. A lot of people think I'm from Syria. Okay. That's, I get that too. A lot of people that say too. that. Yes. They're like Syria and Palestine. Yes. Oh, I don't, I've never gotten Palestine, but Syria is a big one for me. And, you know, I think that sometimes we confuse people. Yeah. 
because people say, well, you're Muslim, but you're white. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yes, I'm aware of both. Thank you. (laughs) Yeah. In fact, that happened to me recently. I was in LA and I was in a taxi cab. And I think I said something, you know, like, oh, I'm American. But he said, but you're wearing a headscarf. I'm like, yeah. yes, I converted to Islam. He said, what does that mean? So he didn't really know anything about, you know, I, and even I didn't, mm-hmm. you know, I didn't think, oh, you can just become Muslim. Yeah. Right. You don't think about leaving your faith. So. Yes. And it's interesting because L.A. is actually where I found Islam. It is. Yeah. Okay. I used to live there and that's kind of where my whole journey to Islam began and it took me overseas and here we are right back. So how did you find Islam in LA? Um, (laughs) You've told the story. (laughs) I've I've told the story a handful of times, yes. Um, So I was working on a TV show. I used to be a production manager and one of my colleagues would leave every Friday and just disappear for a few hours. And I said, what's going on? We need you on set, like why? why do you just get to leave? And he said, well, I'm Muslim and we go to the mosque. And I was like, mosque on a Friday. Why don't you come to church with me on Sunday? Mm. And he was like, thanks, but that's not my scene. And I said, well, no, just come. If you don't like it, you don't have to come back. And he just kept saying, no, I'm not. And I'm like, what? What has got you so stuck that you can't even spend 45 minutes just to see? Because I'm trying to bring him back to Jesus and all these things, of course. So he, he wasn't having anything to do with it. And I said, well, how about this? Why don't you give me a copy of your Quran and I'm going to read it and tell you all the reasons why this makes no sense. And then maybe you'll be sold on the idea of coming to church with me. Well, we see how that turned out. Yep. So in that process, <laughs> I ended up saying, wait a second. <laughs> they know about Adam and Eve. Mm-hmm. You guys know about Moses mm-hmm. and all these things that I knew from Christianity. And everything started to make sense. And all the questions that I had for my pastors that couldn't get answered were finally being answered in this book that I was so desperately trying to hate. And I just couldn't. And from there, I said, you know, I need to leave here. I cannot be reading the Quran during the day and just mm-hmm. being in L.A. and this, all of this, you know, fitna. I didn't know the word at the time, but yeah. all of these things. And I said, I don't. I no longer feel like I belong here and I need to leave immediately. So I sold everything I owned and packed one suitcase and headed to Morocco, to, into the unknown. Into the unknown. Yeah, I did. Yeah, and now here I am. Yes, it's been almost 12 years, inshallah. Inshallah. Yeah. That's awesome. I mean, it's a fun yeah. story, but... So how did you get into art? Well, I've always been into art. My mm-hmm. mom is an artist as well. And so I've always kind of had this, you know, art side of me running in the background Mm -hmm. and when I was in LA I was painting again and as I started to get commissions for art I was like wait a minute this is this is kind of cool people are here yeah there's a lot of money to be made here okay and so I started doing that and then when I when I went to Morocco I kind of took a pause for a while Mm -hmm. just because the availability of the art supplies it was a little difficult to find where Mm -hmm. I was living and not only that there wasn't really a whole art appreciation scene in the place that I was particularly living. And so I kind of took a break. And then when I moved back to the States, I wanted to get into it right away. And then got that commission going here. And then from there, it just kind of picked up momentum. And then I said, canvas is cool, but walls are even cooler. So then it just kind of turned into that. Very different in uh, scale. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, and time to complete. Oh, yes, Yes. I can only imagine. Mm -hmm. How long does it usually take to complete? I'm sure it depends on the size of the the It depends on the size and depends on if I'm mapping it out first Mm -hmm. um, or if I'm just freestyling it. I just did one um, in downtown Milwaukee for this night market. It was 24 feet wide by nine feet tall and I had a few hours to complete it. Oh my goodness. So I just showed up with no plan and said, I don't, I'm not even going to take a pencil to this wall. I'm just going to dip the brush in paint and we're going to see what happens. So I finished it. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. So it can take anywhere from some hours up until the longest one, I think was like two weeks, okay. maybe. Yeah. So it depends. I always but, wondered if people sketched on the wall, like with a pencil. Uh, with chalk. With chalk. Okay. With chalk. I was like, how yeah. do you... With chalk lines thing? too, you can snap it. So you oh, can get that little right. chalk line, yeah. Okay. yeah. So you said your mom is an artist. Mm-hmm. So did you draw some inspiration from her? And maybe who else has inspired your art? Um, my favorite artist, uh, he goes by the name of Kareem Jabari. And he's actually the one that 
taught me how to do murals with all his tips and tricks and okay. his inside trade secrets that he shared with me. So I owe all the credit to him for showing me how to do murals. And so I think, you know, between my mom's influence and just different cultures whenever I travel, mm -hmm. I always try to take inspiration, whether it's from the colors of the spices in Marrakesh and the big yeah. cones, or whether it's, you know, the color of the water in the Middle East, you know, there's so many different things that you can take from each culture and just kind of use that and stay inspired in different ways, you know? You never know when you're like, just gonna see something that stands out to you and when you do, you have to grab onto it and just keep that tucked in your in your artist's file, you know, in your mind. So, inspiration's everywhere. I'm sure, yeah. I'm sure, everywhere you go. If you could go back mm -hmm. and tell your 18-year-old self piece of advice, what would it be? Ooh. Stop wasting time. Mm -hmm. I would tell myself to focus more clearly mm -hmm. and develop the skills that you need to do the thing that you love so that you don't have to work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now I'm at a place where work to me doesn't feel like work. Work to mm -hmm. me is fun because it's my passion. Mm -hmm. But 18 year old me, all I could see was dollar signs. Yeah. So I just wanted to work and make money. But now if if I would have been able to say, hey, you know what? Stop messing around, get on track, get your painting where it needs to be. I mean, who knows what could have happened, but you know, alhamdulillah, yeah. everything happened the way it was supposed to. But I would say just really focus. Focus and just latch on to something and stick with that. Yeah, I think that's a really good advice. I think sometimes, you know, we're encouraged to take on roles and, you know, study things and take on careers that just make money, not necessarily make us happy. Right. And so we, we chase those those dollars. Yes. And yeah. I heard a quote today that said, there's no benefit in the rat race. Yeah. And it's so true because it's very true. Yeah. you just, you're chasing something constantly and you're racing to get the next promotion or the next paycheck or the next mm -hmm. bonus or the next anything and insight of all of that, you really lose track of what makes you happy because you're too busy chasing the next achievement, you know? So instead of rushing around like that, just breathe and enjoy what you enjoy and figure out how to make what you enjoy profitable so that you would never have to be doing something that you don't enjoy. And I've, I've seen a lot of, you know, young people, maybe early 20s, get discouraged from even doing art mm -hmm. because their parents, they say, oh, that's not gonna make you any money. Right. They say it's not serious, it's not serious. Right. Yeah. But I can tell you it's not true. Right. You're a really good example. <laughs> well, that, thank you, you know. for the, thank you for that. But yeah, I think anybody it. can be an artist and I think all of us have some type of creativity within mm -hmm. us, whether it, whatever medium it might be. Right. But develop that and if that means <laughs> you have to keep that as a hobby on the side while your parents are forcing you to go to medical yeah. school, then so be it. As soon as you graduate, then go to art school. Yeah. So, as long as you don't give it up, yeah. you just gotta keep going. Pretty much, yeah. Right. Do you foresee any, you know, challenges in your industry in like the next 10 years yeah. or even challenges that you face now? What does um, that look like? Being replaced by digital everything. Yeah. Having the artwork created by AI programming and actual real artists that are living, breathing humans being obsolete because all of the art is just fake. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that's... I hope that there's always somebody to, to fight for that, uh, other than artists, because I think you have to have people on the outside too, who say, no, that's not what we want. Yeah. We want to see art by real people. And I think, want it to be I think that's why the NFT movement was trying so desperately to take off. And it mm -hmm. just kind of, you know, I feel like people appreciate art that they can see, that they can feel, that they can touch. When you touch a canvas and there's paint strokes on it from a human hand, it's a little bit different than downloading a JPEG, you know? So at one point you took a little break from art, right? Mm -hmm. So I guess you said you went to Morocco, right? Yes. So when did you pick it back up? And so you had just converted as well. So when did all of that kind of start to come together onto the path you are now? Oh, um, well, I converted December 31st of 2010. And then I spent the next five years in Morocco. And then when I came back to the States in 2016, I really wanted to kind of pick up where I left off before I left the States. Mm -hmm. And so once I started getting back into that, I was like, oh man, it feels good to be back. It's so long since I've been playing with color and everything else. And I really started to 
make that more of a priority. And so once that happened, everything just kind of followed suit. Yeah, fell yeah. into place. And pretty much, yeah. Because it was meant to be, right? Alhamdulillah, yeah. Alhamdulillah, that's awesome. All right, that's it for us. Thank you so much for joining. Make sure you stay tuned for more interviews and new content coming your way. Assalamu alaikum.